Of all of the aesthetic design choices in a sword, probably my all-time favorite is the ring pommel. I love the way it looks. I think it looks absolutely beautiful on pretty much any sword that it's applied to. And uh, it, it speaks a lot to me and, of course, my Irish uh, background. But uh, I, I've only ever really gotten a chance to talk about it once when I did my Gallo Glass review. And recently, I got my wife a gift, uh, a gift of a sword. And that also means that now I get to do a review of this sword and it has an Irish ring pommel. Now, of all the types of swords out there, probably my all-time favorite is a long sword, mostly because I've grown to really appreciate that sword design being a practitioner of HEMA. And combining those things, a nice long sword design, along with Irish ring pommels, that makes a really exciting sword. So I'm really happy to do the review of the Valiant Armory Irish Ring Sword. Open ring pommels are a distinctly Irish design in medieval European swords, often seen in the late Middle Ages. Hilts of swords can be used to distinguish between time period and origin, and many surviving open pommel swords date to the 16th century from Ireland, as Irish swords from this time were known for having hilts with open ring pommels. These swords were exclusive to Irish warriors during this period, and could be seen on both single-handed and two-handed swords. The special edition medieval Irish ring sword by Valiant Armory is a stunning example of this kind of sword. It is a Type 13A blade with a Type 12 S style curved guard. The handle is wrapped in green leather with a metal grip spacer and of course the open ring pommel. This sword also comes with a highly decorated scabbard and belt. Here are the specifications of the medieval Irish ring sword. Aesthetically, very few swords can come close to looking as beautiful as this one by Valiant Armory. They did an extremely good job in implementing on their design. Uh, I, I really love the way this sword looks. Uh, the Type 13A blade, uh, very, very nice kind of standard taper, not too uh, much of a taper, but enough for a long sword. Uh, and it has a half uh, length fuller in the blade pretty subtle actually there's a couple of subtleties in the blade that if you were to ask me about it i may not be able to even remember without looking at the blade but the fuller is one of those it's just kind of a standard fuller removes the weight doesn't doesn't do a lot to be showy or flashy uh, and there's also a small ridge down to the tip uh, from where that fuller is but overall the, the blade as a whole is a very very nice implementation uh, it is sharp, um, but the sharpening is done uh, very carefully. You have to get it into just the right light to even see uh, the secondary edge bevel. There is a little bit of one, but it's so indistinct uh, that if you were to ask me, I would say uh, it may not even have it. Uh, it is there. Like I said, you have to get the light uh, just, just right. Um, as far as this sword is concerned from the aesthetic standpoint, it's all going to be about the hilt. Uh, they did an incredible job in making a hilt that's uh, beautiful, handsome, whatever you want to call it. Uh, I really, really actually like the green color of the leather wrapping, the leather dye. It's kind of got a mottled appearance to it, almost antiqued, um, but it's actually a lighter green than you would actually expect looking at the pictures online. Uh, of course, the, the cross guard uh, is uh, probably one of the most uh, distinctive features of this hilt. Uh, specifically the S curve, uh, which I can give you this kind of view, you can see the curvature there. Uh, it's actually a very subtle curve for the S curve. Uh, you see a lot of swords that make it much more uh, embellished, um, but I think it's actually a really nice, very subtle curve to it. Uh, and I also really like they've done what I call the fish tailing effect, which is basically where it gets thinner and wider, uh, closer to the edge of the cross. Now, uh, it also has in the hilt, it has this uh, metal spacer. And this is also something to note because it looks really nice, uh, but it's also somewhat problematic because this is a mild steel spacer. And what that actually means uh, from just kind of a usage standpoint is that as you use it, your hands are touching that all the time. And because your hands are touching it, 
uh, and especially because it's mild steel, it's prone to uh, tarnishing and rusting. And so you have to be really, really careful about how much you handle it. You have to be really careful to keep uh, good care, and especially of this spacer. If you have this sword, it, it, it needs a lot of upkeep. And actually, the sword as a whole seems to require quite a deal of upkeep. Uh, we have noticed just in a little bit that we've used it, it's very, very prone to kind of basic uh, tarnishing. So we've had to do a, a couple passes on it to keep it uh, in a nice condition. Um, and then, of course, uh, the ring pommel. It's the big aspect of this sword. Uh, I really, really love the ring pommel. I think it's a beautiful design, beautiful implementation. And I think it looks just as good as the one on the Gallo glass that I have from Albion. Uh, and then it's got a, a pretty decent peen. Um, unlike something like an Albion, uh, the peen is a little bit more apparent in this design, uh, but they did a good peen. It looks nice. It's, it's, you don't even really think about it. So overall from the Essex, this sword is exactly what you'd want to see. It really is as pictured online. I think it is distinctly beautiful. Uh, I think Valiant Armory did an exquisite job on the sword itself. Now it's also worth noting that there is a scabbard that comes with this and a sword belt. Uh, the scabbard is a wood core uh, and they've gotten this kind of nice embossing design on it where it's it's uh, essentially ivy. It kind of has this very green feel to it. You'll notice that the green of the scabbard and the green of the handle are actually slightly different colors. Uh, I find that to be a little bit strange. Um, but it's all right. It all matches. It's all very green. It's all very Irish, and I think that's really the intent. Uh, it does have uh, this kind of shape piece here. It is really important to note as well that that is prone to tarnishing as well. So there's a lot of aspects of this sword that do require a lot of upkeep. It's true of many swords, uh, some more so than others, and this one seems to just really require it. Uh, overall, though, uh, as a whole, the aesthetics of everything all together really, really just match. It's a good well, one nice piece package. You know, you got the sword, you got the sword belt, you got the scabbard, and it all melds and meshes and just looks nice together. So from that purely aesthetic standpoint, I think this is a fantastic sword. Now there is one thing I will note uh, that is the drawback. And that is there is a, a distinct gap in the guard and the blade uh, and that has come into play a little bit on this because it is not perfectly even. The, the blade and the cross do not match up and do not align perfectly. I don't know that such a concern, as I'll speak to in the functionality section, I don't know that such a concern from a functionality standpoint for this particular cross guard design, but from a visual perspective it is noticeable. The gap is there. It's not the biggest drawback, it is the only one that I can actually really think of in terms of um, just construction and implementation for this, this blade. Uh, but overall, uh, aesthetics, this is a beautiful sword. They did an incredible job. Love the way it looks. Um, I'm glad my wife likes it. Uh, I think she thinks it's exquisite and beautiful as well, uh, which was the entire intent of me getting it for her. Uh, so, very nice aesthetics. From a functionality standpoint, this sword is made extremely well. Uh, the materials used are top of the line, good quality. I have no doubts that they will hold up extremely well. The tempering and the, uh, the flex on the blade are uh, very, very nice. Actually, I, I really appreciate that the flex that it has uh, uh, has a lot of benefit. There are a couple drawbacks, which I will talk to, um, but overall, I, I think they've gotten the perfect balance of, of rigidity and flexibility and strength. Um, there are a couple of drawbacks that are pretty major from a functionality standpoint for this particular blade. Uh, one that isn't so much directly impactful as you might think, uh, that is the alignment of the blade to the cross. I mentioned this, this in the aesthetics section. Uh, it's not as big a deal in functionality, but it is worth noting that of course uh, there is that misalignment and that misalignment is really just for the cross guard. Well, with the curved cross guard, it matters a lot less. Um, as long as it is aligned with the handle, with the grip, uh, it's all good. And, and it is there. Um, so that is not nearly as big a drawback. But with the cross guard, there's actually an extremely big drawback. We came across this in doing some of our cut tests. Um, right here at the tips of the, of the cross guard, it's really sharp. I mean extremely sharp. Now it's not a huge deal but as you can see if you just kind of 
edge it just a little bit, it's getting awfully close to your hand. And if you're not careful, you will cut yourself with this edge. We're going to go back and we're going to maybe file that down a bit uh, to make it a little bit smoother and a little bit less dangerous. Um, <clears throat> now, of course, you can make note that, okay, so you, you just you be more careful around the edge of the uh, the edge of the cross guard there and when you're using it you make sure that you don't let it get close to your own arm i'd rather not have to think about it that much also within the scabbard on the belt it's right there near your hand and as you're walking you can brush right up against it and the fact that it will cut you on these edges uh, just by you brushing up against it that's not really a good thing from a functionality standpoint that's just not a good thing um, so that's actually a huge drawback in my opinion and I think that uh, Valiant Armory, as they are actually still making these now, they've got a second run of these happening, they need to go back and they need to, they need to make sure that they don't put such a really razor sharp edge, uh, specifically on the cross guard, because honestly that feels like it's the sharpest piece of this entire sword. The blade itself doesn't even feel like it is that sharp. Um, <clears throat> balance on the sword is a little bit strange. You can see uh, it's almost six inches out. Uh, from the cross. It doesn't impact the performance all that much. Uh, in handling, again, the, the sword actually feels very light, um, and I actually feel like uh, most of the weight is actually in the hilt, um, but of course, obviously, it isn't. So you got quite a bit of weight out on the blade. It has more to do with the taper of the blade, that um, it's it's not as, uh, as distinctly tapered as some other types of long swords. Uh, there is, of course, a slight distal taper, but it's not also as distinct as you might think, uh, in my opinion. Um, but yeah, overall, the, the sword, it feels nice in hand. It feels very functional. Now, uh, I'm doing new things with cut tests. I actually purchased Tatami mats, so I'm now using those in these reviews. And um, I've done a couple different cut tests with a couple different swords, uh, but this will be the first one I do for a review. And I will note that uh, I had trouble ever actually getting all the way through the tatami mat. Now, that could be completely user error here. Um, I'm not used to using them. I'm not used to cutting on tatami mats. It's much easier to cut through bottles. It's much easier, in my opinion, to cut through even pool noodles, uh, even though those have edge alignment issues. Uh, but I found it extremely hard to get through the tatami mat. I don't really think that's a sharpness concern. Uh, I mean, this is a long sword after all, so cutting is only part of the equation it needs to be good in a thrust uh, i didn't really do any thrust tests it's really sharp to the tip it will get through its target um and so uh, I, I have a hard time actually judging how well i feel it cuts uh, because of that but it was getting nice deep cuts into the tummy even though it wasn't getting all the way through uh, so that's at least something to note um, again i don't think it's a problem with the sharpness of the blade although i do think it could stand to be a little bit sharper I don't feel like it's quite where it needs to be. It might be just a little bit dull, uh, and so a little bit of extra sharpening would go a long way on this sword. Overall, again, functionality, I'm actually uh, pretty pleased with how well it performs. I wanted to give my wife something really, really nice that, uh, that she could kind of learn with uh, and feel comfortable with using. Uh, and of course, we're doing long sword stuff, so I want to give her a nice long sword design. She loves the look of it, and so this was the perfect thing for that. She's had some chances to get out there and do some cut tests herself. Um, it's it's very interesting, uh, very nice sword. Uh, again, um, cut tests may not have worked out as well as I would have wanted, but I do feel like it's perfectly functional, and I'm actually uh, pretty much uh, completely happy with how well it it works. Uh, again, there are those drawbacks, specifically the sharpened piece of the cross guard. Overall, I feel this sword uh, and its package deal with the scabbard and the sword belt uh, is just an incredibly good deal. Valiant Armory has a very, very uh, fine, distinct style, and they do a very good job implementing on that. Uh, good sword construction, very, very nice light blade, um, and of course, it looks beautiful. This is that kind of perfect blend be between the aesthetics and the functionality of a sword. Um, and at the price mark they're asking, I actually think it's actually a very good deal um, and because I, I think it works on multiple fronts. If you're looking for a, a purely uh, cutting weapon or a, a purely uh, functional weapon, uh, this one definitely has those drawbacks. And so um, the aesthetics are going to actually take a little bit away from the functionality. And that's certainly worth noting and is a very, a very important thing to note 
um, because as you're looking at this sword, you just have to be aware of those aspects. Um, but they're minor aspects. There are things that you just need to be aware of, and then and that's okay. You can work around them. You can understand those issues. Uh, but this, as a package deal, is just a beautiful thing. Love this sword. I think it's really, really gorgeous. Uh, I was really hoping it would be. Uh, this was my. This was the first sword pur purchase I've ever done with Valiant Armory, um, and so. In my mind, it was a little bit of a, a question in my mind is whether or not it would be as good as pictured. It really is. It is absolutely gorgeous. Um, I wanted a great gift for my wife. I got a great gift for my wife. Um, and that's all thanks to just the superb implementation that Valiant Armory puts into their products. Um, and so good design, good aesthetics, uh, very good functionality, couple of drawbacks. Overall, very good package deal. I was very happy that this purchase really came through. There is a bit of a lead time because uh, they, they basically make things at order. Uh, so it was a couple months for them to actually make this sword, about about three months. Um, but it, it was absolutely worth it. They did a, a fantastic job. Valiant Armory is really doing a great job to establish their name as a good brand for production line swords. Uh, so here it is. This is the Valiant Armory Medieval Irish Ring Sword. I give it a 4 out of 5.